Tom Gunn here with you with another restoration project today. Uh, if you remember a while back, my buddy Mitch gave me a rusty box of tools uh, for my birthday, and I made a short video showing what those tools were, and in there was this vise. So it's the holiday season, and I'm doing a restoration as a holiday project. I think what I'm going to do is restore this vise and give it back to Mitch. So before I'm able to give this back as a Christmas gift, there's some things on here I'm definitely going to need to address. So my goal is to get it um, all broken down, and I soaked a lot of the stuff in oil already, so it's ready to go. Hopefully the jaws will come out easy. This um, I soaked, so it should come out easy. Got some bends in here. Got some bends in this crossbar here. Uh, missing a screw down here that goes in the middle, a bolt. So I'll have to figure out um, how that works. There's usually one in there that kind of doesn't thread all the way in. Well, it threads all the way in, but then it's positioned so it could swivel. So I'll have to figure out a solution for that. And then um, let's get into it and break it down. So before I pull this ring off here, which is always a pain in the neck, um, I want to show you, see this slop and this play I got in here? Must be missing something in there. I'm not sure if there's some sort of uh, piece that goes in there, but I think it's missing something. So I'll probably have to fabricate something so it doesn't have all that slop. I went right at it with an old screwdriver prying on it. Hadn't had luck with these in the past. They were hard to get off, but you could tell this one was uh, definitely taken off previously. And it wasn't made out of the greatest material, to be honest with you. Finally just banged it off with a hammer here. So let's keep moving along. Here what I'm doing is trying to take the bend out of that arm that operates the swivel on the base of it. Um, and you can see there's some daylight in there. And I'm just kind of squeezing it close. It's not gonna get perfect at this stage, but trying to take the heavy bends out of it. Um, just by working it in the vise here and then eventually um, I'll try to refine it a little bit. I've tried banging them out with hammers and I usually do that towards the end. I'll use an anvil and a hammer to try to put some final touches on it. But the vise does a good job of taking out the large bends. So what you gotta do is just keep working it. As you can see, there's a little bit of daylight in there and as you squeeze the vise, it really does tighten it up. Um, you just gotta keep working it, um, trying to figure out where the bends are and repositioning it. Then finally, I finish it off using a piece of wood, almost like you would in a press. And you just adjust the wood to where the bends are and as you can see there, it's coming out pretty straight. Close enough for me. So at this point, everything was going too easy and it was just a pain in the neck getting that one last screw out. And as you can see, I was not stingy on the 50-50 as Scoutcrafter would say. I soaked it for a long time um, and I just I just kept, kept stripping it out. I tried putting a wrench on it. Finally went to a left-hand drill bit. I like to use that first um, because sometimes the left-hand drill bit would just catch the screw and back it right out. Unfortunately, that didn't work either. I had to drill it all the way through and then use an easy out, as you can see here, and that ultimately got it out. Been a little bit distracted with this project. Um, my new toy came in. As you can see here, I got a Chinese mini lathe. This is a 7 by 14 um, and I got it up on the bench been playing with it a little bit uh, haven't used it yet uh, but who knows maybe by the time I get this video done who knows how long it's going to take me to get it up um, I'll have some video maybe at the end uh, playing with that but I will definitely make some videos in the future uh, as well and who knows maybe um, maybe make some pieces for this lathe uh, with the lathe for this project, but I doubt it. Uh, all right, so here's where I am so far is everything's been taped off, hit with um, some primer, put two coats of primer on it. I actually just hit it with a light sand of about a thousand grit. And the primer I used was this one here, just from Harbor Freight Self-Fetching Primer. But what I want to do is show you this here. This is called filler primer and it has a little bit of material in it so as you can see here you see it's just the slightest of grooves 
might be able to see. There you go. The slightest of groove over there. So I am going to paint that with this filler primer. And it's almost like giving it a little bit of body work. So I will do the two main surfaces uh, with that. I might not do this one. This one looks pretty good. But I'll definitely do that. So I'll show you the results of that. And then I'm still deciding on the colors here. I definitely want to do something uh, with a Christmas theme. Because it's a Christmas gift. Let's keep moving along. And here I am with the primer filler. And as you can see there, it was a little windy, but it was a nice day outside. It goes on a lot heavier than a regular primer. Look how it's just coating it right there. And it does even out all those finishes. I ended up doing about three coats. Um, this was the nicer side. I ended up hitting that uh, side of the vise as well. I think I just put one coat on this side and it leaves a really nice finish. And here I'm just finishing up the paint. I started off painting it green and I just didn't love it. So I let it dry and then I put about, a, I don't know, two coats on most of it. Some spots I put three coats of the red paint. Love it. So let's address the slop. While I was at Home Depot, I found this package that contained this spacer in it. And um, in the future, maybe I can make pieces and parts like that out of my lathe um you know this cost me 68 cents so i have about i don't know roughly 800 dollars so far into my lathe between the lathe and the supporting parts that go with it so seems uh logical right but anyway in the meantime let's take a look you see it's gonna need to have uh, i'm gonna need to drill this out a little bit as well as i'm gonna need to um sand it down because it just won't fit in there but when that is able to fit on this collar i should get a nice snug fit there and it should remove the play kind of like a bushing uh, unfortunately i don't have a drill bit uh, that's big enough to bore that out so i will be using a step bit and i do have my lathe in a lot of pieces right now but i just put um, a couple of pieces back on and cleaned it out i don't have the compound or anything uh, ready to go, but I think I should be able to use the 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 lathe um, to drill a hole in this. Let's try it out. So here it is. No practice, nothing. The first time I'm using it is right here. Um, as you can see, I put a little tape on the step bit so I know how far uh, to go in. I didn't want to overdo it. Um, as I got more comfortable with it, I removed the tape. I kind of knew what I had to do. Um, as you can see, I just put the tailstock basically back on. But when you get these lathes, they are grimy and filthy and you take every single piece out. And this thing uh, was just a bucket of bolts. And as I put it back, um, I clean it and reassemble it. So it's like a project in itself. And as you can see there, I don't even have the, the, the cross slide, the compound, nothing on it. Just the tail stock is back in place. And I just did a little sanding there um, after I drilled out the inside to get the outside diameter. Uh, correct and then I had to use a file that to just take a little bit more off than I could with the sanding file to get that diameter correct. And here it is finally done putting it on the spindle fit just perfect nice and snug and when I put it into the vise there was no play. So if you remember, I was missing the bolt that goes in here. It was just basically held on by the swivel adjustment. And the way this works is that a bolt goes in here and it bottoms out. So when it's at it completely tight, it's it'll still allow it to spin. So what I need to do is cut this precisely to the right length. Um, if I was lucky enough to have some extra bolts with the same thread count, so I got to cut it precisely and then we'll all figure out a solution to eat up the spacing okay so to measure it precisely i'll use a digital caliper um, something like this here and what i'll do is i'll just slide it down so that way it bottoms out i want to get it to bottom out but yet i want to get it so i'm still accounting for the distance from there and there it is so that is how much, how long I got to cut the bolt. 
And when I measure this before I cut it, I'll also account for the washer that's on there and it should be precise. So let me cut that and wrap this okay, up. Okay, so what I got here is another spacer. Uh, picked up at Home Depot, roughly 60 cents. I'm gonna cut this down so that it fills. It'll go up to approximately right there. It'll sit on here. This'll tighten all the way down, but there'll be no play in there because I'll have a spacer. Finally done here. Um, you might hear some noise in the background. Junior's home from college and I got him cleaning up some tools back there, giving him some projects to do. All right, so here it is. Christmas Vice is done and I'm overall pretty happy with it. As you can see here, I went with a little green color for the holidays, outlined it with the white. I'll show you how I did these white letters as well as the outline. Um, I picked up these markers and I thought it was fantastic and they worked great. But let me give you a closer look at it. Let's take a look at this, how it came out the other side. And here's the other side, came out great. Um, this diamond though was a pain in the neck. Had it painted great, I don't know what happened. It got orange peeled on me. I had to sand it and redo it. Came out pretty good. I, I took most of the orange peel out of it when I redid it. Not sure why it got orange peel. I don't know if I put the clear coat on too heavy. That may have been the case. Or I feel like there might, the paint was definitely dry because it was dried for days. So it wasn't that. Uh, I thought maybe though I might have left a little bit of mineral spirits on it. I might have not dried it completely before I put the clear coat because I wiped it down with mineral spirits. But either way, uh, I patched it up and fixed it. Over the, all the metal here, um, you saw I did a lot of this with the grinding discs. Then did um, finished it off with the fiber wheel, and that's what I did for this year. The fiber wheel mostly straightened out the handles the best I could. Uh, very similar to the way I did the handle here i did this handle as well let's take a little closer look at the thread here as i candy caned it as well as the jaws so as you can see here swivels fine no problems no slop in here fix that with that little spacer that i put in it opens up really great put a couple new screws in here those had to be all sanded down and fit fitted in to fit uh, nicely, but I'm happy with the way it came out. Just kind of polished out the edges here. Clean this with the wire wheel. And if you take a closer look here, I want you to get a look. Kind of put a striping in there. What I did there was spray painted that and then wiped it down with a rag with a little bit of mineral spirits on it. And it made it a candy cane type uh, screw thread. And that's the Christmas vice. So I hope Mitch likes it. Uh, not super valuable. I looked them up online. They're going for about $20, $25 plus shipping. I'm honestly not even sure if they're made in the USA, but I'll tell you what, they don't look like this. So all the castings are, are rough and this looks great. This is all polished out. I put a coat of wax on it. Just put a really light coat of oil. Hopefully Mitch will beat it up though and he gets use out of it and it won't look like this forever because um, I want him to use it. I don't want it to be a showpiece. I want it to go into his workshop and hopefully he'll use it. But look how nice and smooth it is. Everything lines up well. All the jaws line up well. Uh, let me just show you about those markers and we'll wrap this video up. And this is what I use. These acrylic pens here. I bought a package of them on like, I don't know, Cyber Monday or one of those deals. I paid $5 for them and they are um, three white and three black. And it made doing these letters so easy. As you can, The only thing I will say is that the tip is hard. It's not a, a fabric tip. So what happens is when you hit a little bump, it has a tendency to spray a little bit. But except for that, it looks great. And it is so easy to do. You could just paint it as you go two light coats done same thing around here really good tip it's acrylic paint it's not a marker and then i just clear coated over it so happy holidays wish you guys all a merry christmas happy new year um maybe i'll have a video out before the end of the year i don't know um but if not i'll talk to you all in the new year please like and subscribe and thanks for watching